Over the course of the campaign, Donald Trump and RFK Jr. had an enemies to lovers type relationship, if you're into that type of book. So initially, you know, he's a challenge to Donald Trump. Trump is calling him a crazy leftist. He calls him the dumbest Kennedy. And now they're like best buds and they're they're down in chicken Big Macs together and everything. But apparently, you don't have to go back that far to find RFK Jr. saying the sort of thing you'd say about a person that implies there's no way you're going to eventually work with them. Take a look at this. You write so beautifully, and I, you know, your stuff is so fun to read. But you write about Trump. Quote, the way that you build a truly vicious nationalist movement is to wed a relatively small core of belligerent idiots to a much larger group of opportunists and spineless fellow travelers whose primary function is to turn a blind eye to things. We may not have that many outright Nazis in America, but we have plenty of cowards and bootlickers. And once those fleshy dominoes start tumbling into the Trump camp, the game is up. When you talk about fleshy dominoes, Chris Christie comes to mind. Okay, so I don't, I don't know what the fleshy dominoes thing is about. That's just weird. I, I think that's just a fat joke, I think. But anyway, uh, what I find interesting about the other commentary and more of what he said um, in this talk is he has kind of a similar sort of analysis of what Donald Trump and his movement is as J.D. Vance had. And there's a lot of overlap in what is now being revealed from this old tape in the experience we had with J.D. Vance. So in that episode, uh, and it's on his radio show, uh, Kennedy spoke about the, quote, appeal of segregationist Alabama Governor George Wallace to, quote, white middle class men who had experienced the civil rights movement in the 1960s as a social demotion and who found their life in turmoil, arguing, quote, that kind of insecurity, I think, is the target of the summons that Donald Trump has sent out to the American public. And that reminds me of what J.D. Vance was going around for like two years saying that Donald Trump is a con man and he is poisoning the working class by giving them the like, I don't know, tasty tonic of racism uh, to activate them, even though he has no intention of actually helping them economically. And so they both seem to understand the identity based con that's happening here. But of course, RFK Jr. now, just like JD Vance, no longer thinks that these are outright Nazis and idiots and all of that. And he said, like many Americans, I allowed myself to believe the mainstream media's distorted dystopian portrait of President Trump. I no longer hold this belief and now regret having made those statements. And Jordan, I think that is amazing, partially because that's almost exactly what JD Vance said. In both cases, they're like, what, me say something? No, the media made me say that. I mean, sure, I was using that to build my brand for literally years, but it's all on them, not on me. That's the sort of personal responsibility right wing men take for themselves. And also for RFK Jr., he's acting like, dude, you were critical of him up until earlier this year. You've experienced years of Donald Trump being what he is, and you so thought he shouldn't be president that you tried to beat him in that. You tried to be president. So to now say, no, it was totally just Rachel Maddow that made me say all those things. Don't be mad at me. That seems pathetic, but what do you think? Yeah, I, I think what this reflects is how I think most of the party doesn't really like him. They kind of want Trump to go away. I think they like the benefits, of course. But I think in many Republicans, there's a part of them that doesn't really like him. And they know who he is. They don't care. They don't act on it because it can help them. He's a major player. He can clearly rally a large portion of the country. And with his support, they will benefit. But they don't really care. They'll fiend loyalty, of course. But when it comes down to it, like the real true believers, like the Matt Gateses, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, you know, a lot of the MAGA people, like the hardcore MAGA people, like they really do like him. But I think for people like RFK, who doesn't have that strong association with him, or even JD Vance up until recently, they're they're smart enough to know who he is, and yeah. it's just calling a spade a spade. Like they know he is vile. They know who he brings out. But because they can benefit from it, it's like, oh, maybe, no, that's the media took it out of context. Or maybe it's just like, they're lying. They know, they just don't care. They have no morality. They're looking out for themselves. They're looking out for their careers and their future prospects. And if it means 
associating with a guy that they know inspires white nationalists and racists and Nazis, so be it. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of what J.D. Vance, like all of the, the years of podcast appearance. So after he decided uh, Trump's not going to be Hitler, or maybe he is, but whatever, I want to be one of his generals. Uh, he then spent a couple of years going on all these right-wing podcasts and just like smearing women, basically, to build his brand that way. And now when he's asked about it, he's like, oh, they're, they're being unfair. They're taking me out of context and everything. I just find it amazing when these guys who the only thing they've produced in their life is noises out of their face hole. Now don't want to be held responsible for anything they said. Dude, that's how you have everything you are. It's the only reason literally anybody knows who he is, but you can't hold him responsible. And like it's one thing that he's now, you know, like trying to run from the stuff he previously said about Trump. But like theoretically in a couple of years, after Trump's kicked the bucket, like JD Vance probably be doing the same thing about the stuff he'd said positively about Donald Trump. Like these guys are constantly running away from who they've been. But before we move on, just super fast, do you think so? Like, do you think there are gonna be like secret toasts when Donald Trump finally kicks the bucket among Republicans? Like, we're finally past this, and now we can just start openly warring. We don't have to worry about bowing down to this guy we have absolutely no respect for. I think behind the scenes, yeah, they're all going to be relieved. He'll be out of the way. His family, you know, as long as he's around, his family is also going to be uh, occupying a lot of space. Like Laura Trump seems like the one that they've kind of picked to enter politics next. She's, of yeah. course, with the GOP, but potentially the Florida Senate seat. Maybe. So, yeah. Ugh, I think yeah, I agree. If, if, yeah, if they're out of the way, they're going to be happy. Yeah, I mean, I know Don Jr. probably hopes that he'll be next in line. I know he has a lot of history with lines and everything, but I, I don't know that he has the charisma uh, to break through, but we'll see. <music> Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen, and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.